Mark and Kim Holinsky lost their son Tyler to suicide back in 2018 and have been fighting for the mental health of student athletes since with their nonprofit Holinsky's Hope. Mark and Kim join us now with more. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank I don't you. think intuitively people put athletes and mental health in a category together. Why is that so important? You know, our athletes today really are under so much pressure. Mm -hmm. um, they have to perform well, right? They need these NIL deals, um, transfer portal, throw in COVID and social media and really not cr uh, kind fans. They are just under a lot of pressure. And then you think their students too. Uh, we lost Tyler to suicide and, mm -hmm. and we didn't realize um, maybe the pressure, the anxiety that he was experiencing. and and. Maybe you don't think those things go together, but they really do. And then later, after the autopsy, you discovered he had first stage CTE. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. That was tough. Um, it's not clear, you know, what exactly Tyler suffered from. He didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Part of our mission is to is to encourage our student athletes to ask for help when they need it. Mm. Um, you don't have to have a huge problem. It's okay to ask for help early. And I think some of them. There's been a tremendous change in the last five years, we think, mm -hmm. um, and many of them now feel more confident in asking for help. They would ask for help if they were uh, sadly diagnosed with cancer sure. mm -hmm. be, wouldn't be embarrassed about it. We need the same thing for mental health. Mm -hmm. And you're ta talking to the students to ask for help. As a parent, what do we look out for? Because in Tyler's case, he had just won a big game not uh, too long yeah. beforehand. Yeah. I mean, what, what do parents need to be seeing that maybe they're not seeing? We get asked that question a lot. And you're right, Tyler, just three months, he, he won a big game, hoisted on the shoulders of the fans, you know, on the field. And then he was gone three months later and we didn't see any signs. We go back and we see these little breadcrumbs. And maybe if there's a little change in sleeping patterns, if they're not texting or talking as much as they used to, if they're eating too much or not eating at all, if they're skipping class, um, if they're partying too much, you put all those little pieces together and you have to really sit down and have those conversations. And they're tough to have, yeah. right? How are you doing? Really be prepared to listen and, and get them the help if Without they need judgment, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah anything that right. seems out of the ordinary. So with Holinsky's Hope, how are you reaching out to the universities so you can get that message to the students that they need to seek the help? We, Kim and I have been doing this Tyler talk for uh, the last three and a half years or so, been to over 200 campuses. Um, we don't have an out, we're small group, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, and so we try to respond to all the campuses that would like us to come and that's everybody from you know big division one you know athletic powerhouses to division three and NAIA junior college and so forth and that opportunity to talk to those kids and tell them Tyler's story has been so well received mm -hmm. that we continue to do it and if it if we can just you know Kim's talking about breadcrumbs and, and you talked about, or, or we talked about, the fact that things change just ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. None of those individually, we would have grabbed Tyler and run him to a hospital, right. yeah. but collectively that change was something that we should have stayed harder on. What, what's really going on? Don't just write it up to more pressure and more stress. Um, you know, because of the fact that he was starting in a bowl game and had a big, big time uh, season that year. So you have to f kind of find that out. And, and we didn't do that. So when we talk to these student athletes, we encourage them, you know, through stories about Tyler, mm -hmm. that if you're feeling this way, there's zero wrong with asking for help, first mm -hmm. of all, yeah. right? We've got mm -hmm. tremendous athletic uh, professionals and, and Olympic uh, uh, folks that are mm -hmm. doing such a great job of telling their story. Tyler can't tell his. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to do that and encourage our student athletes to ask for help when they need it. Uh, I love to your credit on your website. You guys are like, we are not mental health counselors. Right. You're just parents who lived it. Right. Um, so what are you getting to the schools in terms of the program to help get them the tools that they need to address these? We started uh, something four years ago, started uh, College Football Mental Health Week. We just renamed it uh, Student Athlete Mental Health Week. It's a week, the first uh, part of October, where we come together. We mail out all these boxes of hope with helmet uh, decals, lapel pens, cheer ribbon, female hair ties, our, our wristbands. Um, and it's the way we come together across the country, coaches, fans, athletes, to let them know that they matter, their mental health matters. Um, and we had 191 schools across the country join us this year. We've also developed um, some resources. And yeah, we spent a lot of time yeah. and energy and, and money on the research part, yeah. as you say. 
we're not we're not experts. So we worked with them. And one of the things that Kim and I say all the time is that this is a crisis in the collegiate level. Period. There's no other way to describe it. We've got to train and educate our kids younger than that. So we yeah. came up with. Uh, working with uh, Dr. Hebbard and the folks over at um, UCNG or uh, uh, Green, uh, Greensboro, excuse me, um, and they put together a six-part mental health course mm. and teach them the vocabulary. What mm. differences between on the spectrum? What's sadness? Everybody's sad, but are you yes. depressed? Yes. Yes. We're yes. anxious, but are we really? Yeah, because I was watching the documentary that ESPN did, mm -hmm. or at least a portion of it, and your older son was saying that he had talked to Tyler mm -hmm. uh, just not too long before that, and Tyler was expressing that he was sad yeah. and that he couldn't explain why he was sad. He couldn't pinpoint what was going on, but he just was sad. We yeah. hear that over and over again from student athletes that we meet with. After we do these Tyler talks, they all come down, and we're talking about 550 student athletes with an AD and, and coaches, and they're all in there. They come down and talk to us, hug us, tell us their stories, and they say, I've been struggling with my mental health for a long time, but I didn't want to be a burden to anybody, or I didn't know how to reach out and ask yes. for help. I didn't know how to take that first step. We always tell them, Use Tyler's story. Yes. Use that story to start that conversation. Yes. Let's just make yes. talking about mental health normal, as yes. it should be. As it right? should be, very yes. much so. Keep the conversation going. That's, That's right. right. Thank you both so much for joining us. We and appreciate you, you for sharing, sharing yeah. your story. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, uh, get some more information, if you'd like, on Linsky's Hope. Uh, there is the website, linskyshope.org. Uh, you can also donate by uh, texting the number you see there on your screen.